Welcome to another special edition of Mark's Tasty Tong. How's it going, guys? Hope you've had all. <coughs> have you? Hope you've all had a good week and uh, earned a few quid. You join me live in my biltong shed. Let me show you today's glorious roasts. Okay, there's some serious reflection here, but we have got some epic roasts, some uh, tops, and I've even got dry walls to hang later. But you know what? Hi Loretta, how you doing? How's it, how's it? Right, let me click you over. Enough of my ugly mug. I'm gonna throw you straight into the holder. Oh, sherbet. Come on. This thing's not holding the phone properly. <clears throat> I'm gonna go up a bit. Excuse the wobbly wobbly. We are live. I could do a, a hand show. <laughs> right, knives are sharpened. Tubs are ready. Lights on. Cameras on. Action. I think we are going to start with something epic. Let's start with this beauty. Look at the size of that, baby. Oh, that is seriously heavy. Good sized beef this week. So as usual, we start off by simply removing our packaging. Run the water so it's cold. Rinse my blade. Give the roast a quick once over. Get rid of any foreign bits and pieces. Right. Jeez, that's mahusive. Now with this roast, clears clearly shows you the three muscles that we slice. This is the main muscle here. Then you got this sort of triangular shaped one and there's your bottom round there. And while I've got it this direction, just under the skin, follow it round, you get this sloppy stuff off. That was actually a perfect slice there. Now this is a mere membrane between the uh, hide and the, the meat. Now, I don't always start on this side, obviously, but you can start whatever side you want. I am going to be picky about what I'm taking off because I need quite a lot of lean as you guys may have noticed on my page, um, I have been making built-on cakes. No, no oven work, no flour, pure meat, pure beef. And I tell you what, I think I've already got eight cakes to do for, for May. I've already probably done about 10. Um, proving very popular and obviously it's something different hey people don't just want it's a lot healthier too very healthy option actually hell I'd be ecstatic having a, a built on cake um, I'm sending one to Denmark this week to a Danish lady well she's she is clearly from Africa she knows what Biltong is it's a late 50th treat and she's ecstatic 
at the thought of receiving it. I send it on Tuesday. She may well receive it by Friday. Get my deliveries are quite quick for international. Um, I've been sending to Switzerland. Been getting there in four to five days. Now obviously I'm being quite harsh here taking fat off but bear with me I will be securing some of it for Biltong <laughs> that piece for sure this whole top piece here I'm going to take with me go straight into the tub there's another big piece here Oh, I took too much. All right, leave that on the side, I'll sort it out. Right, let's flick it over. This is where you see most of the marabish. This is the stuff that has to come off, this slimy. These guys were lazy, man. sold me all their rubbish. <laughs> uh, there's a piece of my blade, get it off. Try and get just underneath. This very thin you could leave if you wanted to, but I'm being quite harsh here because I need to make chili bites again and original bites so um, sadly my meat mixing my spicing machine is out of order so I'll be doing it by hand this week which is fine did it before can do it again won't compromise any of my quality. Oh, that's gooey, that one. It might look a little overwhelming when you look at it, but Start anywhere on the back and just move your way around. You can chop and change wherever you want to start or finish. Or if you choose to go from one to the other. What I do need to make sure is that my Wi Fi is working. I don't know if it is. So this is separation of the two muscles. Try to do it awkwardly so that you can see you're literally running your blade very lightly between the two muscles. You don't usually see this part, so do it the other way around to make it easier for me. But you are literally trying to break that seal between the two muscles. Never always get it exact, but I do my best. Here we go, and that's separated. I'm just going to turn this so it's easier for me to take that bit off. These bigger ones will take me the longest because they require the most trimming. Slicing itself is pretty quick, as you know. Um, so, if my dad or sister is watching this, well done on your recent trip to Kariba. 
caught quite a few fish. They didn't fill the boat, but they had a good session. And they've spent some good quality time together, which is always important as family. Wish I could have joined you. Unfortunately, I can't just get on a plane. Um, they left Kariba this morning. For those of you from Zimbabwe, and they spotted a leopard next to the road, live leopard, which is pretty, pretty awesome. That is a spectacular experience, which I wish I could have experienced myself. You just don't get to see them that often. They're very, very, very um, shy cats. Right, this is pretty much, look what's here, Jean Patrick, beautiful, uh, yes I did show up in it, I've given up on uh, seeing how long it can last, just because it was getting a little blunt and I tell you what, once it's sharpened it's back to its original sharpness now, it's so so nice. Anything with a little bit of fat goes into the fatty biltong pile. If you need to trim little bits off while you're working, then do that. Um, I want to try and get, see how this, I'll do it this way now because that bottom has got a bigger base than the top. You see the angle here, makes it awkward if it's the other direction. Don't worry about odd shaped steaks or slices. I'm obviously in Africa, you would slice these a lot thicker. I'm in the UK, my machine dries it pretty quick. I can have my bottom dry in 48 hours. So I need to vary my thickness. This will make, do you know what I am gonna do actually? No, we'll do all the slicing and everything first. I was gonna slice the chili bites, but Careful slicing towards yourself. That's what I'm doing. See this piece here? Where's, where's my filleting blade? Try and go in between that membrane and your meat and use it to your advantage and pull. Very, very easy. I say that, but I've done it a few times. I think I must have cut up thousands of kgs of meat by now. You know what, this whole piece here, I'm just gonna take, it's gonna be built on. <clears throat> There's a nice bit of fat on the end here. Gonna follow that round, take it with We'll still get hung. This piece I cut off earlier. I don't know what I'm going to do there. I'm going to go halfway, I think. I'm going to cut that in half. Going in the built on pile. Now that is a nice lean piece. There is obviously the smallest amount of fat on there, but that's fine. Nice. This is your bottom round. I can go straight in, beautifully lean. This will make really nice stockies. I have actually been considering 
changing the labeling of my chili bites and my original bites to chili stockies and original stockies but I'm afraid that not everyone will get it I think I might just stick with the bites and that is number one should we do another big one <laughs> let's do a couple of small ones then another big one going to be live for the whole lot because I've got quite a few. Uh, one, two, three, four, this is five. The others are big. So this is obviously a <coughs> one muscle, isn't it? Well, actually, it's two. We're just missing the bottom round. So, Again, I've got it on its belly, if you want to call it its belly. I'm being quite barbaric with the fat this week because I need a lot of lean. I've said that already. I was uh, going to start my live video with some <laughs> Some funny like voiceover, but uh, chickened out in the end. I'm not totally crazy. Some people might think I am, but I am not. I'm gonna leave that piece nice fatty there. Leave that bit too. Silver side here, I've left a little piece on it that will go off to be dried. Makes excellent dog chews. I think I have a customer for life. For them, she has two spaniels and they absolutely love them. And if I'm perfectly honest, I think ours do too. But try not to give them too much. Okay, we just tidying up the top now, or the bottom, should I say? Let's turn this around so you can have a look. Not that you haven't seen it before. I'm going to do a couple of little ones, then another big one, then I'm going to go and have a coffee. I like to give my back a bit of a break in between. So, yeah, you can see there was quite. This piece here, I'm just going to take with me. It's going in there. Built on pile. Even that bit there, because it's such an end piece, it cut off with meat, goes into the built on pile. What I really should do is slice this down, and I've done it before, but nah. Bugger. Let's just do it how I do it. You can see my uh, Jean Petit knife, my my 10.99 or 9.99 or whatever that it was. Pretty sure it was 10.99 actually. 11 pounds on Amazon. Does very well. Now here we've got some. What's happened there? Let's go in the fatty. Let me show you that really close. Look at that. Bit of marbling there. I think I'm gonna lay it on that side now because it's the 
broader side. Still cutting it lengthways. This is going to be for bites anyway, so. Always put pressure on your left side, right if you're watching me. Just to keep it together while you slice. I have gone into my hand before doing that too, so always be careful. Always be conscious where your blade is. I'm no expert, but I've learned from. I have ended up slicing myself before. It's not good. Oh, this one I got got a little bit of a leak on the packet. So. Be washing that. All right, let's put that on the side. Always be conscious of where you get your meat from. Mine can be traced. You, if you are an approved seller, as I am. You need to be able to trace your meat. If there's ever a problem, you can always go back to the origin of that particular animal. This is all British beef. Imports are far and few between. We used to do Australian beef. It's over a year ago since I have not been able to get Australian beef. Due to the old virus, so, let's just get busy. Sometimes less talking and more slicing is what's needed. So, let's do just that. I need to tag the uh, <laughs> the bearded butcher on my on my post. I would like him to be a guest on my one of my live feeds. I have to see if I get a hold of him. Imagine he's a bit busy on a weekend. He's very popular on Facebook. One of those guys, he's in America, I think. Um, they pretty much slice up whole carcasses. Um, they do venison. This is, you know what? This nice fat on this one. I'm actually gonna, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm gonna have some of that. So, Let's move my lean out of the way. Oh, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. And I'm stuck in here slicing meat with you, gorgeous people. Rock and roll. Yeah, we want, we want the fat on this. the blade in a little bit. I'm still learning how to do that by the way. I am absolutely self-taught. Practice makes perfect. Eh? So again I'm varying the depth. 
not dips, but the thickness of my meat. I'm going to start from the left side here, move down, run your fingers through. This has got some nice fat in it. It's a little bit wagyu. It's almost, it's, it's not completely wagyu, but it's, 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 it's up there. It's pretty good. I've had better. Clint Charlton, I know you're watching at some point. That's your kind of piece there. In fact, maybe I'll save these for you because you have ordered. <laughs> All this will be ready on Monday evening. So if you are going to place an order, www.markstastytong.com I am actually officially now Mark's Tasty Biltong Limited. <laughs> Rock and roll. Right, um, Jesus. I got three monsters, and I don't know which one to start with. Oh, mama. I'm gonna do one of these, and then I'm gonna end the feed. Look at that. How is that for? How's that for some beef? And it's good to give it a good slap, eh? It's a practice for your lovely other half's backside. <laughs> she loves it. She hates it, really. I think I smack it too hard. Right. That's TMI for this show. It's not a show, but you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. That is a gorgeous piece of meat. That is pretty much the whole flipping rump area. I'm telling you the whole side of the muscle. I imagine the leg goes down that way, comes up and round side of the hip this is it that is your entire side slab that is the silver side it's a beast she's a beast beautiful lean animal this not a lot of fat this one and i think i'm gonna go with uh <laughs> i picked up my saboteur it's nice and sharp all my blades have been sharpened, I'll just switch between them. I like to follow the muscle round. I'll leave that piece of fat there, some nice fat that. But obviously this is the stuff here. Now the trick is to try and get in between that muscle and the fat and try not to take too much meat with you. Some of you are cussing me again. Why is he cutting all that fat off? Well, here's the good news. I'm not cutting the good fat off, I'm cutting the bad fat off. So, don't panic, Mr. Mannery. See these on this bottom part round? I like to go around the edge. I love that feeling of it going under the skin. See, I can put my finger under there, create a little bit of pocket of space and I can just slice through. Let's cut this piece off here with 
to some meat. So that will go into the fatty pile. Beautiful. One, two, three mussels here. I must find the correct terminology or name of each mussel, but these are perfect examples and you can clearly see the grain running this way, running this way, and running this way. Oh, this is where the fun starts. Look how much they've left on this side. When, when your meat's pale like that, it's not a bad thing. It just means it's well drained. It means the, the animal has been dispatched quickly and has, they've, they've drained the blood from the animal. Woo, nearly cut my twitch up. Basso buena. Yes. Be careful. I guarantee you I'd have millions of followers if I sliced, sliced into any of my body parts right now. And I'm not gonna do it just for that. I can promise you that much. I am not that desperate for followers or customers. They come to me for quality, not for my witty humor all my slicing skills, or maybe some of you do. Hey Clint? <laughs> so, get right in under there. I am being pretty harsh. Right, I'm going in underneath that strap. The saddle strap, the side strap, the silver strap, the silver side, the tendon, if you want to call it. I imagine it has other names. I don't like any of this congealed blood on my roast. I've said it before, butchers will quite often keep it all, all of this, because it would go into your burger mixes, your sausage mixes, bourgeois. Let me tell you a little funny story about bourgeois. <laughs> I don't know if I showed you actually. I made some yesterday at my local butcher, of course, where I go and make my sausage. And I stuffed up badly because I decide I'm going to try cheese and onion. I love that combination, sounds great. Cheese and onion and beef, perfect. What could go wrong, you say? Well, I'm doing a whole 10 kilo batch and I end up cutting the cheese into squares. I think it's big enough. I think it's gonna be great. You're gonna get little pockets of cheese in your bourgeois. <laughs> we put it into the stuffing machine. It stuffs the uh, skins and it blocks it every time because my little blocks of cheese were not little enough so ended up having to mince the whole lot again so it's had a double mince and I don't have big chunks of cheese in my bourgeois so but you know what it smells amazing I haven't tasted it yet but I am 100% it's going to taste amazing. It's not going to be exactly, exactly original Buddha Vors. 
But you know what? Practice makes perfect. So next time, I will make sure that I very, very carefully <laughs> slice my cheese a lot smaller. Oh, what's happened here? That little piece there will have to go into the waste. It just won't even hang that. I got quite a lot. You watch everybody want fatty this week and I'm gonna be like, whoa, well, I haven't got, sorry. You're gonna have to have lean. Cause I got a load of lean. What I am gonna do here is go underneath that. I usually do it the other way around. Do you know what, there's, there's it from that side, there's it from that side. You get a bit of fat with your you got to be um, adventurous, no? Um, confident is the word I'm looking for. If you want to see here, there's fat underneath there, but I'm going to actually cut that whole lot off and dry that as it is. This is a little more discriminating and that's going to get cut off. going to be over four kgs of waste this week that's for sure but there is a lot of meat here you guys better get your orders in are you watching I'm sure as hell you're watching you best put your order in it's end of the month you should have been paid I have and it's already blooming gone it's one of those easy come easy go kind of months Almost every month. My youngest daughter got her first official job this week, so I'm very proud of her. Eldest daughter's working as well. So proud of them both. Hope they do very well. Gotta support dad one day. <laughs> yeah, buy me a house, my girl. Right. Beautifully, beautifully. Now, when you order lean this week, this is the biltong you'll be getting. And trust me, there is hardly any less than 0.1% in that. There's tiny little specks in here, but you wouldn't even know it when it's dry. No way, Jose. Right, I have literally got three more to do, but I am going to have a break because my back is killing. Um, you guys don't need to be watching me all day, all morning. I'm going to do a little quick clean up, quick weigh up. Take you out of the holder. How's it guys? How's it guys? Wow! I've literally got one viewer. That is proper sad, hey? Should be 1,000 or 100K. Anyway, guys, have a good weekend. Stay safe and have an awesome week. See you again next time for another exciting episode of Mark's Tasty Talk.